So let's have a look here now at uh, four strategies for kind of execution. Again, we're, we're whizzing through these pretty quickly uh, just to kind of give you a few overviews of, of what's available. Keep checking in. What am I doing already? Uh, what could I do more of? Uh, what could I start doing if that's the case for you? One of the fundamental factors in terms of good trading execution is being able to keep your focus on the trading process. So on decision making, I remember working with a guy uh, from an investment bank who was having phenomenal anxiety and stresses in his trading to the degree that he actually um, had a uh, developed an eye twitch. And um, that eye twitch was so significant that, it, you know, it became, a, you know, he became aware of it, but also other people did as well. And it, and it only came on particularly when he was having a challenging time in the market. So what we um, worked on together was helping him to become much more aware of his trading process. He was a guy who every day wrote down how much money he'd made or. Um, but he wasn't. Um, really thinking about how he made it or how he lost it, the process, the decision-making process. We've really got in the system of giving himself a score out of 10 each day based on the quality of his trading execution. So really looking at the question of how, just how much money he'd made or lost. And in doing so, over a number of months, not weeks here, but over a number of months, he began to really shift his focus and got really, what was happening with his trading process. He how did he lose it? Uh, and what was interesting was um, over a period of time, the eye twitch actually went away. Uh, he felt less stress. Uh, and even though we had some difficult trades and on one, he actually incurred a big loss he, in losing a lot. He's fine, but he made the best decisions and had minimized the loss. Uh, and by not getting too hooked into how much money he was losing, he didn't end up chasing them. You know, in your trading as far as you can, and it, it's very easy to keep, um, to get hooked up into P&L, how much money I'm making or losing, but really try and think about that. Again, good research showing that traders and investors who focus more on the process, focus on process, and I was just talking about the impact of process on decision making, focus on making good decisions, and um, Again, the story of, of the trader with the stress and the eye twitch, though, so really, really key. And again, the research showing uh, traders, you know, who focus on process and decision making uh, outperform in the long term. So really think about your own process in terms of, you know, observing the market, what you're looking for, what is an opportunity, uh, spotting those opportunities, uh, being able to, you know, um, you know your entries, uh, how you manage your positions and your exits. They're all really kind of key fundamentals in that trading process. And the more you can stick with trying to make the right decision uh, at the right reason for the right time, uh, then the better your returns will be in the longer run. So I uh, just want to clarify, because I think there was a comment earlier just about um, with, me, with me having traded. Just to clarify, I, I traded um, in order to really learn more about trading. When I was in sports psychology, I spent a lot of time trying to learn about the sports I was working with. And I'm practicing those sport training with the guys to kind of really be involved. I thought that was really important. So when I started working with traders in 2005, I thought it was really important for me to also build that trading uh, experience and language and history. So uh, that's why I started. So um, I'm not a, uh, a trader who's become a psychologist. I'm a psychologist who's become a trader. So kind of done it the other way around. So um, I, I enjoy trading, but it was purely for um or for money making. So I hope that clarifies for some of you. Uh, the second thing around good execution is this flexible response. Now, there's a, a phrase in the military, which is a no plan survive first contact. Uh, and what they mean by that is obviously the military spend lots of time planning, uh, preparing, strategizing, ready for combat situations. However, once you're under fire, you have to be able to flex um, your response and not necessarily stick with what you planned just because you planned it. And so this is really um, Something to think about in terms of trading discipline. Lots of people um, say that, um, you know, discipline, you know, pre-plan, prepare, stick to your plan. Uh, and, and in general, I would agree that, that that's pretty useful. However, what I would add is that um, because the market is unique from moment to moment and changes in those moments and changes sometimes outside of what we pre-planned for, there 
be, and it's been suggested this is where the very best traders excel, there might be times when being flexible in your decision making um, would be really important. And, and you, we see examples of this sort of response in the military, we see it in sport, uh, we see it in business, uh, that sticking to the plan was useful, limiting, and there may be times when being flexible might be useful working with a lot of um, top traders in banks and funds, whilst they're disciplined and do have planning and strategizing, they are also flexible in their responses. So um, the plan really is a bit like a framework, you know, it's a set of guidelines to work toward, um, but they're not too rigid. I think pretty important. Term, what you say longer term, what you say longer term as out then. Um, well, if you if you think about it for beginners, um, the in the short term, luck can play, or randomness and luck can play more than skillful or not will be, um, will, will be easier to suggest in the longer term. There's a great book called Fooled by Randomness. It's Talib, and um, he talks a lot about how some traders made a lot of money in the short term, um, and that might have favorable market condition, uh, for example, and in the longer term, we'll get a more um, precise um, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get a better view of, as to whether somebody you know, is skillful or lucky, so, so time is, is a factor. The third factor in terms of um, execution energy now is really important when you're trading and again, often underrated um, but when your energy is low I've put on there a number of facts but to group them together particularly what we see is decision making becomes um, less well thought out, quicker and not always um, as good. Um, risk perception changes. So how we look at risk and reward changes. We tend to overweight reward and not focus too much on risk. Um, we get a reduction in self-control. So our discipline um, starts to get affected. Increased risk of error. In the long term, if you know, tied all the time, more important to die trading for longer, uh, then, um, you know, health can be a factor. Uh, and motivation, enthusiasm, and commitment. So fatigue is, is a real problem, um, and obviously which traders are multiple decision makers. There is a great bit of research done, some of you may have heard about it, done in Israel with uh, parole officers, people giving um, or, or, or meeting with prisoners and deciding prison, you know, early on, the, on, on parole. And what they found was that um, if you had your parole meeting early in the morning, you had a 70% chance of getting parole. Day you only had a 10%, uh, and the peak times to get parole statistically were first morning, after the morning break, and after lunch. And the reason for that is because to make a decision takes load, takes cognitive energy. Doubt, don't let them out. So keep them in prison. That's the kind of the fail state. Uh, you know, to commit to and form a case for a. You need to really give it some real good, you know, some real good energy and some thought. So glucose and rest were significant. So, again, if you're trading throughout the day, it's really important to think about your breaks, where they are in the day. You know, realize on oxygen and glucose. Make sure you give it a rest. If you've had a really busy morning uh, in front of the markets, again, getting a bit of an extended break in the, in, in the afternoon is really key. Some research is suggesting you can make two big decisions before you get, a, you know, a real decline in decision capability. Um, so if you, you know, if you're kind of really going for it and, you know, making some big decisions, and this would involve, you know, if you've made decision uh, in life as well, it's not just in our trading because it's the same brain. So if you're making big decisions in life and you've got to make them in trading, you can expect some cognitive reduction. So glucose and rest are critical, as are, as we talked about earlier, sleep, exercise, nutrition, and rest.